V.V. Loves Science, Sink or Float by Kimberly Dirting, Shirley R. Johans, pictures by Joelle Murray. Vivi jumped out of bed. She fed her goldfish bubbles. I am going to the aquarium today, Vivi said to Bubbles. I will see lots of fish, but you'll always be my favorite. The school bus dropped everyone off at the aquarium. Let's go learn about different marine animals, said Miss Cousteau, Vivi's science teacher. Do fish get sunburned? Why do fish float? Do all fish need gills? Is a seahorse a fish? What is the smallest fish? Can sea starfish swim? Is an electric eel really electric? Do flying fish really fly? Vivi loved marine biology. She could not wait to meet the marine biologist at the aquarium. Vivi had a list of questions ready. First, the class touched the stingrays. Vivi was surprised to feel the rough texture of their skin. Next, the class observed the sea lions. Vivi didn't know sea lions could swim so fast. Then they visited the sea turtles. One turtle was at least 75 years old. The class gathered at the tropical tank. The tank was filled with fish and marine animals in all shapes, sizes, and colors. A group of bright blue fish swirled by. Look! They are in school too, says Vivi. That is a school of blue tangs, said Miss Cousteau. Let's see if we can identify some of the other sea creatures. I see an octopus, Jeremy said. There is a clownfish, Vivi said. They hide in sea anemones. Wow, that hammerhead shark is huge, Jeremy said. Sharks don't have to hide from anything, Vivi said. Jeremy pointed at a fish resting in the sand. Is there something wrong with that one? He asked. No, that's a flounder, Miss Cousteau said. Aren't fish supposed to swim, asked Jeremy. A flounder is a species of flatfish, said Miss Cousteau. It can swim, but it likes to sink into the sand and hide. What makes a fish sink or float? asked Vivi. Good question, Miss Cousteau said. Let's ask Dr. Fisher. She smiled at the scientist who had joined them at the tank. Dr. Fisher is a marine biologist, said Miss Cousteau. She studies the ocean and everything that lives in it. This was exactly what Vivi had been waiting for.
Does anyone know why fish sink or float? Asked Dr. Fisher. Is it because of their fins? Said Vivi. Good guess, said Dr. Fisher. But it's because of a special organ called a swim bladder. What is that? Asked Mia. A swim bladder is an inflatable sack that fills with air, sort of like our lungs or a balloon, said Dr. Fisher. Let's go to the lab and make our own swim bladders so you can see how they work. Dr. Fisher smiled and led the way. This is going to be fun, said Vivi said to Jeremy. Low, density, high, float, sink. Dr. Fisher drew a diagram on the whiteboard in her lab. Whether an object sinks or floats depends a lot on, the, on its density, she said. Do you mean how heavy it is, Vivi asks? Actually, density is both how heavy and how big an object is, said Dr. Fisher. So a brick would have a high density, said Vivi. And a beach ball has a low density, said Jer Jeremy. That's right, said Dr. Fisher. The swim bladder helps the fish change its density, said Dr. Fisher, which helps it sink or float, said Vivi. Dr. Fisher nodded. Exactly. That's, let's see how it works. Dr. Fisher handed out the worksheets for the experiment. Use the materials at your station, she said. Let's investigate. Vivi and her team followed the lab instructions. Vivi pushed one end of the long plastic tube through the opening of the balloon. Jeremy taped it up tight. Mia put the balloon into a glass bottle. Benji taped the tube to the bottle opening. What do you think will happen when you put the bottle in the water? Asked Dr. Fisher. Will it sink or float? The glass feels heavy, so I bet it will sink, said Mia. Vivi put the bottle into the tub. The bottle filled with water and sank to the bottom. Does anyone know why the bottle sank? Asked Dr. Fisher. Because our balloon is empty, Vivi says. Good observation, said Dr. Fisher. The bottle filled with water when you put it into the tub. It was too dense to float, said Jeremy. You got it, said Dr. Fisher. What do you think will happen if we inflate the balloon, said Dr. Fisher. Let's find out, Jeremy said. Benji blew the tube. Air filled the balloon. As the balloon grew, the bottle rose to the surface. It's floating, said Jeremy. That's because the air in the balloon is much lighter than the water, said Dr. Fisher. So, the bottle is not as dense anymore, says Vivi. 
Let's deflate the balloon and see what happens, Jeremy said. Benji uncovered the tube and the air started to escape. The bottle began to fill the water and became heavier. Look, it is sinking again, said Vivi. Can you see how this activity mimics a fish? Dr. Fisher asked. Now it looks like a flounder, said Jeremy. I get it, Vivi said. The bottle is our fish and the balloon is its swim bladder, Benji said, which helps it sink or float, said Mia. I wonder if all fish have swim bladders, Vivi says. Actually, sharks and some, some stingrays don't have swim bladders, said Dr. Fisher. It's a good question. You would make a great marine biologist. Vivi smiled. I have more questions, he said. Let's hear them, said Dr. Fisher. Vivi read her list of questions. Dr. Fisher answered them one by one. I had no idea fish were so amazing, Jeremy said. That they're not, Vivi said. They're fantastic. Do fish get sunburned? Yes. Why do fish float? Swim bladder. Do all fish need gills? Yes. Is a seahorse a fish? Yes. What is the smallest fish? A dwarf minnow. Can starfish swim? No, they glide. Is an electric eel really electric? Yes. Do flying fish really fly? Sort of, they also glide. That night at home, Vivi observed bubbles swimming around the tank. Now I know why you can float, she said. Vivi loved science and marine biology but she loved bubbles even more.